the common modalité de gouvernance. So my name is Tophe Muller. I come from the Danish tribe. I'm a citizen for the world and I'm 65 and an apprentice uh, grandfather. And uh, I'd love to be alive. The reason um, we have the pleasure of uh, being with you today is around the topic of the commons. And when I speak the commons, what does this evoke for you? What's the commons? I honestly don't know what other people understand by it because I haven't studied it as a practice or a concept. But what it evokes in me is uh, the common ground of humanity, that there is a uh, thing that penetrates all of us where commonality, where unification is already naturally existing. And I have a sense that through time, in so many cultures, this knowing and a, the activity of making that uh, come alive into a societal space, into a village, a culture, a city, uh, a, a country, a nation, has been taken by certain people and brought alive a, uh, a strength of, of, uh, uh, of basing ourselves in that unity rather than trying to make everybody the same but allowing diversity to exist, but with the knowing that there's an equality that we are all born with, and allowing that to be uh, the basis of decision-making, of sharing the resources of the village or the city, is a wise thing. So it, it speaks to me of wisdom, actually, and of... Um, something it would be cool to have more of. And there's also this notion that it is uh, it's conscious activity. People would not speak of comments unconsciously. And that attracts me. But I'm, as you speak to me, I'm happily ignorant of the definition. So, uh, thank you for asking me this question. Uh, the event that we're holding right now, the Art Hosting Training, has been um, registered within a, a larger event that's going on within the world right now, which is called uh, uh, Cities That Are Commoning. And it's a uh, a special event that takes place in October and different cities are partaking in this event and the idea is connecting the events to the concept of commoning to rise the consciousness of the events and uh, Montreal is partaking in this international movement and uh, it was with great joy that I went onto the site on behalf of the team and registered this event within that larger Commoning Cities events. Are you surprised by this? What does it evoke? I'm not surprised. <laughs> because the more I go underneath the methodologies for conversation, and for co-creation, so you could say the, the useful and very important structures that allow us to be delving into substance matter, problematics, questions that is not otherwise dealt with very wisely. The more that I get to, to see what's underneath that, 
I realized that it, there's an attempt going on for us to become citizens rather than consumers. I'm part of it, you are part of it, probably every single human being is part of it. Some of us know it or are beginning to discover it and some don't yet. And so uh, that this effort is arising and that these practices that we have now called the art of hosting and harvesting conversations that matter for the common good, maybe I've seen that common, common good practice arises out of these tools practices. And so the constellation between this effort that you're describing for me, which I didn't know of until now, and the dojos, the training ground for people who want to learn how to shift operating systems to become common ground, fair, uh, human, and uh, where wisdom we can meet each other with wisdom rather than with our mediocre opinions about what's right and wrong. So it's just beautiful to me. So many things are taking place now across the planet and I get to witness a little bit of it where this it's not many things competing about space. It's actually, it's so spacious because the need for us to learn to live more softly on the earth is so evident. And so I think I love that uh, the, the discovery that millions of people around the world, we may call it different things, we're actually all working on uh, learning how to live together better and more consciously and share the resources and not overdo it. You know, this, this overdoing that happens when we act too unconsciously is ruining the planet or it's hurting the planet. And that's a stupid thing because this is our home or we get to be here for a little while at least. Would you consider yourself a commoner then? Yes. Uh, but again, the word is now, it's beautiful because I don't have the definition of it. You allowing me to just be with the feeling of it. And uh, I, not just would I consider myself being uh, a label which I don't ever have connected with. I call myself, I'm just a hobbit. But because since I was a little boy, I always knew I was life. This is, I'm not separate from it. This connectivity between everything is how it is. That's how the universe works. And so, uh, but in the sense of being a conscious citizen who wants to contribute and help harmonize things, maybe where you could say a commoner is you're taking action. I come from a lineage of, of, of families that, you know, half of my family were very uh, dedicated school teachers and going back into the generations in the de democratization of Denmark which has just happened within the last 200 years. And the silent, peaceful revolution of the Danish people, where we didn't kill any of the leaders. My answers to you, as more I discover of it, has that uh, always to promote learning and education that allowed us to become human and live, uh, you could say, uh, and live together without making a big fuss. If you had to describe what the commons is to one of your grandsons, how would you, how would you help someone understand what it could be? What commons could be? 
We have in Denmark a very beautiful word in our language. Fælles means to be together. Fælled, ending on D, fælled, means uh, the thing that everybody owns in the middle of the village. And so our parks since the ancient times have been called fælled. And uh, in our you know, 9,000 year old culture, because before that there was the ice and it was too cold to live there. Um, in those years of being villagers, Felle was uh, also the name for the field. So there's been in the consciousness of you know our tribal nature uh, and collective wisdom this combination of fellas, fellas, and the field. So field could also be the land we share to grow things, but it's also, of course, the the common ness the the connectedness alive as a, we help each other out we live our lives together and ownership uh, is maybe more like st in, in the fell it's more like stewardship which is a beautiful thing because it's recognizing we can't really own anything I think this owning and possessing uh, is there some obnoxious, what's it called, obnoxious, uh, stupid, unconscious activity? Because it defies the fact that we just come and go. And so I'm excited about the awakening of the fellow. Uh, and maybe lastly, to say that. So we're beginning to play with this in Denmark now, some of us who are the commoners of Denmark, and we are saying, not fellesskab, but fellesskab. Because on the fell we work together to accomplish something. And it's a very, uh, you know, uh, I'm just intrigued, I'm in this inquiry. Uh, we have an island in Denmark that's become completely sustainable on energy with windmills. And we have been part of creating conversations with the commoners of that island who were actually not, they were fighting. You know, the farmers didn't want certain things and the grassroots people wanted something else and the politician wanted something else. So through conversations that we were hosting with these people 12 years ago, they came together, not just because they wanted to be fitless, which is a nice idea, but they created a fellow and the fellow was to co-buy uh, windmills so that this island could become completely self-sustaining on energy windmills, which they accomplished over a period of six years. And now last year they called us back together again and we had a, another fellow by asking the question, what should this island 2.0 become? And so there's this notion, and of course that's, I think, part of this inquiry between the idea of being, having a common, and then the commons that maybe is the activities we do in order to co-create something. And uh, so that's the closest I, you know, back in my own culture, that's how. And, uh, and it's being reawakened now. It's almost like you're calling forth a uh, healthy uh, consciousness. Just Two little things. When we were in Berlin, the last meeting we had with all these commoners from all over the world, somebody introduced the idea of the art of commoning. Because, I don't know if uh, um, you mentioned that already, because somebody were part of this art of hosting kind of movement and were there. So, uh, how do you see the art of hosting can really be also or could help the art of commoning? 
see more and more the art of hosting or never has been for me actually it is not a definition it's a practice and a practice with a purpose of creating places where people can learn together and in that learning field new things can arise and also we can begin to discover each other in our true equality that we are all of the same tribe called this human species and I have a feeling and I've seen it in other contexts that uh, the hosting of learning space whether that is a conference or that is a seminar or that is a decision making or that is an inquiry uh, it is very hard for groups of people to stay conscious and in the knowing of the deep comments of, of, of the space in our life condition not as another political idea which I don't wouldn't be interested in pursuing um, So hosting and harvesting conversations that matter is a way to help groups to become more and more conscious together by learning and creating a container in which even our diversity can be turned to be beautiful and not blow up people's collaboration, blow up comments because uh, we are too narrow-minded. We become too narrow-minded if we just is on the opinion level. And so uh, I would see it as a beautiful uh, collaboration between whatever the comments that is needed now, that is apparently being awoken by the work and you and many other people are doing, uh, and those of us who are offering ourselves to become uh, skillful and to help inspire anybody else to become skillful in creating meeting, meetings and conversations where what matters is what's happening and where common ground grows rather than uh, seeding wars or seeding animosity which is, has been ripping the human species apart and now damaging all the rest of the creation in the pursuit of nothing. So, uh, and maybe one, one other thing, you know, there's a you know, powerful acupuncture point is how do we meet and what comes out of it. That is a huge acupuncture point that we have not really put our finger on for a long, long time. You just assumed anybody runs a conference, you have keynote speakers and people are listening and then but where's the collective learning and what's the harvest out of that? And how does we, as we meet, become more united and unified by the way we are meeting, not the talking about it? But then there's, of course, always the operating system. So you could say one conversation or an inquiry could be like a program in a computer. But what about the, the OS 8.90? And what I have seen out of hosting, when it becomes who we are, you just host space and care for it, and learning and good stuff comes out of it, then it can begin to shift operating systems of big you know, institutional ways, but, but simply by shifting how we practice in those structures. And so, to me, one of the gifts may be that uh, what if the what if the learning village this is my name for this pattern is can only be brought about by practitioners and so my and this is not that I would interview you, you back but I'd like to sow a question into the comments the work that, that you are apparently representing at this moment in this context what are the practices of creating comments and how 
as we be, what are the practices that allow us to be good, healthy and useful and creative commoners. From the notion that practice, what we practice is what the future will be. It is not just what we think and what we would like to have. It. So the another even as powerful acupuncture point besides how we meet is what are we practicing in our lives every day. Are we practicing peace? Are we practicing kindness? Are we practicing being conscious citizens or commoners or whatever you would like to call it? Or are we practicing deceit and fear and, you know, uh, greed and all those things that just rip us apart? Or are we practicing this beauty? And so there's, and I've seen it in other cases, like the natural step movement are also seeking, we are beginning to find each other. And for sure, whatever is the gifts of the common ning practice unfolding, what is the gift that you could offer people who practice this? Because I think we all just coming to a place where we're learning how to to live as human beings and not to live as shadows of human beings. Would you repeat the question? If you had to define the comments in one sentence, addressing your compatriots in, 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 in your own language, what would you say? There is a common ground waiting for us. It's time to show up. But in Danish? There is a fellow that waits on us. We are all invited, and it is on time to meet up. Thank What I added in Danish that I didn't do in English is that we are all invited. Thank <laughs> you.